Well, the thrust of the presentation that I gave at the recent ICNO ECNO meeting was around how difficult it has been to find a way to use immunotherapy alongside standard radiation and chemotherapy approaches. We may have imagined actually from the success that we've seen in relapsed metastatic disease, both in the first line and in the second line setting, that a translation of some of those immune checkpoint inhibitors that we've been working with so successfully would actually lead to benefits for patients receiving definitive treatment. And in fact, thus far, the clinical trials have not shown that. So I reviewed evidence from the Javelin 100 study um, published uh, relatively recently in the Lancet Oncology, demonstrating in a randomized phase three setting that a lead-in one-week dose of avelumab plus concomitant avelumab, followed by one year of adjuvant avelumab, uh, a pdl one inhibitor, didn't yield improved outcomes in terms of progression-free survival or overall survival against standard of care chemo radiation. And those data now stand alongside other data, including um, the so-called REACH trial, which was done by Gore-Tec, which I reviewed, which looked at an experimental arm of radiotherapy plus avelumab and cetuximab and compared that in platinum-eligible patients to standard-of-care platinum radiation and in platinum-ineligible patients to standard-of-care radiation and cetuximab. And again, the data from that study did not show a positive benefit for the addition of immunotherapy to radiotherapy. So we're left really with a conundrum as to why this isn't working. And of course, we can speculate as to what some of the reasons of that uh, for that might be. And I think the areas that we need to really devote research to are around the scheduling of treatment. Should we really be giving treatment during the radiation or should it be given in an adjuvant or a neoadjuvant phase? The volume of tissue that we irradiate including whether or not to irradiate the loco-regional lymph nodes, which may be associated with loco-regional and indeed systemic lymphopenia, and also then what should be the dose per fraction that we use. So lots of unanswered questions which I reviewed. At the moment, we're lacking in answers, but we're not lacking in ideas for trial design.